Welcome to the Red Letter Challenge. I am so excited to be here. I've heard about this for a time. I've talked to other pastors and, and quite honestly, uh, giving credit where credit is due. Um, the, the guy who wrote the book is somebody I went through um, undergrad and seminary with, and uh, a friend and uh, an LCMS pastor. Um, this is the, the first year that the book has been out, and it's been passed around among a variety of LCMS churches, and our hope is that uh, with the experience that you've had, and as we get a chance to share that, that uh, the good gospel that's within here will be able to be extended via publishing and the good stuff in here um, to other Christian churches and, and the reach could be even further than that. So welcome to not just the Red Letter Challenge here at Holy Cross, but a community of those that are walking through and taking seriously the red letters in the Bible, the words of Jesus one at a time in a 40-day setting, walking through as a community, trying to put them into practice with the challenges that are there. Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for, oh, thank you for your word. Thank you for revealing yourself so clearly to us. There's a lot we don't know, but there's a lot that we do. Lord, help us to be those that hear your words and put them into practice. And Lord, we pray that we'd not only, that you not only transform us through that, but that we'd see this as one of the greatest opportunities that we've ever had in our lifetime, because you can transform the world through us with them. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. So again, I'm Pastor Adam, and I'm delighted to be with you and leading you through the Red Letter Challenge. We started there with the children's message, talking about um, Matthew chapter 7. A wise man built his house on the rock, and we saw the example there and that solid foundation. We sang about it in a couple different places here today. And it, it's the kind of thing that, that Jesus said at the end of this sermon, the Sermon on the Mount, because he invited people to kind of do that introspective thing. Where am I at? What, what kind of things am I building on? Am I more like the one who hears and doesn't put it into practice, or am I more like the one who hears and does? Am I standing on the solid rock that God has invited me, that God has empowered me, that song we just sang, the Holy Spirit has moved in me to stand on, or am I picking the sand instead? Let me know what you think. Let's, let's do a little uh, word association game, if you will. Um, so we've got our verse of the day. Everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. That one's not going anywhere. Word association. Jesus. What comes to mind? If I say the word Jesus, what does that make you think of? Shout it out. What? Savior? Okay. Healer. Healer. Thank you. Cross. Yes. Grace. Friend. Friend. Love. Love. Pizza? Pizza? Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. He does provide all good things, even pizza. <laughs> the ability to laugh. I mean, all that. All right. Let me, let me put it the other way. Uh, now I'm going to give you another word. The Christian church. Word association. Jesus. Okay, very good. The Bible. Yep, one more. Family. Family. Yep. Shout it out loud. I can't quite hear it. What's that? The house of God. Okay. If we asked that, this, this same question, not in a Christian church, but on the street, what kind of answers would we get about Jesus? Some of the same stuff? No, what would we hear? Judge. Judge. Okay. Yep. Bible thumpers. Okay, so now let's go to the Christian church for a sec. Uh, Christian church. How would we? How are we perceived? If we did word association there, what would we get? Hypocrites. Hypocrites. Okay, very good. You guys are a bunch of you all at the same time. Thank you. Intolerant. Intolerance. Okay. What else? Judgmental. Oh, I heard what over here. What? Brainwashing. Okay. Far more positive things when we say the word Jesus, generally, than the church. What's that? God's children, yeah. We are God's children. That's what he tells us that we are. But sometimes as the world looks at us, we don't look like God's children. 
And if what Jesus said is true, this is a problem. And here's one of the words Jesus said, the, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Now the picture is this, the world that we live in now, the one that Jesus was a part of and continues now to this day, is a time where uh, harvest has come, that the seeds have been planted, the, the crops have grown up, there are things that are starting to, to grow off of them, and now he needs people to go out into the field and take what has grown and bring it into the barn. And the analogy is this, if, you, if they don't go out in the field, stuff's going to spoil in the field. Or put that in day-to-day -day life for us. There are people that are ready to hear the words of Jesus, that have been prepared, that the seeds have been planted. He's prepared you to go out to bring that in. And if we don't, they won't hear it. And they'll die not knowing him. This is a verse that uh, might even get brought up when we uh, welcome our new senior pastor. Be part of us. We talk about this as a, as a pastor kind of thing to do, but I don't see pastor anywhere in there. Do you? This is us. This is what we do. This is who we are. And if this is what we're about, and this is how, and what we talked about is how the world sees us as hypocritical, judgmental, divisive. It's not going to work. Here's a swing thought for today. If we can really express Jesus as he really is, people will fall in love with him. And, and here's why I believe that to be true. You've come to know Jesus' grace, his forgiveness, his ability to heal, to be with you, to comfort you. And this is transformative for your life. It's come into you, uh, though you didn't necessarily ask for it, but it's come into your life and led you to believe these things, and it has changed who you are. But as we live out in the world, people don't always see that same Jesus through us. And my thought is if they did, in fact, not my thought, Jesus' thought. When they do, they'll see him. And when they see him, it will change their lives too. So if we're looking at this thing that we've got before us, we're, we're the, the ones who are out to do the harvest, and uh, we're not representing the, the one who has sent us very well. We've got some obstacles before us. One is our bad reputations. The second one is good intentions. And let, let me explain. And have you ever been in a position where you are uh, aiming for something, striving for something, and when you finally get it, it's not what you thought it was? Like, I was, uh, had a chance to visit Jim Kerbel in the hospital this week, which I think Jim's out there. Hey, Jim. He was in a motor vehicle accident last week, and things were pretty serious. Uh, but we were talking about life and, and uh, how he had uh, kind of his journey with Jesus and, and things to this point. And he talked to me about how he served in Vietnam, thank you for your service, and uh, then came back and was trained to be a teacher and had spent some time out in Wyoming and the, the great wide skies and all that kind of stuff. And what a beautiful place that is. I've not been there, but it sounds like it's worth going to. And was looking forward to his teacher placement, saw the list that is there, and there on it was Wyoming. And it was fantastic, and he signed up for it and uh, goes to sit down with the gentleman that would uh, tell him some more details about it all. And uh, the guy looks at the sheet and says, Hey, Jim, glad to see you're going to Michigan. Because he was coming to Wyoming, Michigan. <laughs> Aiming at one thing, end up with something completely different. I think we do this sometimes in life as well. We're striving for certain things, like maybe it's uh, a good spouse or uh, to raise your family well, to have a couple children, to get a good job, to get the house that you're looking for. And, and I'm not trying to dog anybody's spouse or job or kids or house, but how many of you have gotten to that spot and meant, thought to yourself, this isn't everything that I thought it would be? It isn't as fulfilling as I hoped it would. It didn't deliver everything that I thought it might. I think that's our common experience. And then maybe we strive for something else, and maybe that'll fill it, and something else, and maybe that'll fill it, and, and it continues to be this empty process of looking after these things, but they never provide what we're expected. Well, here in the Red Letter Challenge, I want to make sure that we're aiming at the right things. 
And uh, as Zach, the pastor that put this together, was looking at the words of Jesus, and I, I see this too, uh, having been led through it uh, and, and going through this challenge before already twice, um, that there are th categories of what Jesus talks about, right targets to aim at, that when aimed at well, we'll actually get the things that Jesus desires for us to give, desires for us to receive. And it's what we're going to be working through in the course of the Red Letter Challenge, week by week, taking one of these at a time, focusing on the words of Jesus about these particular topics, so that we're not trying to do everything all at once, but focusing on some that God might want to work through us and in us to accomplish His purposes for us. Here's the targets we're aiming at. Number one, being, that we need to be with Jesus. And this is what will happen over the course of this week. We start on Tuesday. We're going to read about each one of these categories. Uh, and then starting the, the following Monday, um, or sorry, the following Sunday, uh, we'll work through uh, the week about being. And the concept is this, we need to be with Jesus. That if you're not connected to him, you can't expect to grow from there. And, and my hope is that, um, that that isn't just where we start, but how we continue from there as well. But uh, the next week is forgiving. We're called to be people that not just receive grace, but practice grace, show grace. Uh, three, serving. It isn't going to save us, but it might save someone else. If you're sharing the things and using what God has given you for the benefit of others. Giving. Aside from uh, the kingdom of God and, and the, the restoration of, of all that Jesus was sent to do, this is the topic he talks about most right behind that. He's given to us so freely that he's empowered us to be able to give to others. And lastly, going. That we're not ones that just sit here and receive and enjoy and bask in, but are taken to places that we never probably would have gone on our own to do things we never probably would have done and set aside things that we probably wanted to do, but God's got something better for us, and he sends us on this mission to go in the places where he sends us to go. Now, as we embark on this journey, I have some things I want to share with you. This very easily could become a, a full-on guilt trip seven weeks. It could be something where you look at these challenges, the 40 things, there are 40 more things that i got to do, and I'm going to check the boxes, and I'm going to be the good little Christian that I'm just going to do what I need to, to do, and I'm going to buckle down and work at it. And that might be because I have to. It might be a pride thing because I want to prove myself to be the right kind of follower of Jesus. But all of that is not what God intends for us neither in this challenge nor in the rest of following Jesus. This could easily become just a, a self-help kind of thing. But it won't be if you, in putting Jesus' in words into practice, invite Jesus along with you. You need his strength. That's why the first full week of it is being. We need to be with him, connected to him, so that we can bear the fruit that he wants us to do. You cannot do this on your own. Don't try. Invite him along with you. Let him lead you through it. And don't just start the challenge this way with the first week and then leave it behind. But let this be the character of every part of the challenge, that it always begins with prayer and, and seeking the Holy Spirit to guide you through his word because it's what he's promised to do. And then invite others along with you. I gave the image last week of a, a rope that we're all on and, and carabiners each connected to it like we're on a journey going up a mountain. Clip in next to someone and let them clip in next to you. And it could be in a life group that meets throughout the week. It could be the life group that meets on Sunday morning. We had, oh man, six, seven tables of eight in the fellowship hall and space to welcome more. Come walk with us there. If your life group doesn't meet every week, come meet uh, here in the off weeks or do that every week and process with your group um, the, your experience there and your experience personally with the Red Letter Challenge. There's plenty to do in that packet that uh, you've got. Um, more to do on each week than we'll ever be able to cover in a life group time. So use that um, either at home with your family or gathering with other Christians um, so that you have support for this. This is not a journey that we intend for you to do alone. Jesus didn't either. Man was not meant to be alone. And I invite you in this idea of inviting others along with you. Don't just do it in physically inviting other people with you, but share with others what the journey has been. 
I've shared with you already that this has been a transformative thing for some of these other churches that have done this before. It's what gave me the, the vision and the desire to be able to share it with you here because I heard about the transformation, how it impacted their communities, how it made significant growth for the individuals within their churches, and so I wanted to share it with you. I wonder, no, I don't wonder, I think I know, that if we got a chance to hear stories from one another about how God is working among us in this place, that we would be inspired to see things we didn't see before and, and strive for things we didn't want to strive for before because we've seen how the person just down the pew from me or the one who sings up front or the, the guy who's out passing out bulletins had his life moved and transformed through this and we strive for and dream for it even more. So I challenge you at each time that you gather with your family or your life group, whether on Sunday morning or at other times, Pick at least one thing from the life experiences that have been heard in that and decide together who's going to share that. And go on to our website, Red Letter Challenge, and put it in there. It's an anonymous kind of thing unless you want it to be otherwise. And we want to share them so that we might inspire one another to the things that God has given us to do. So share your story. Take the congregation along with you. And lastly this, give yourself some grace. If this is what Jesus is most known for, being the one that is loving, to the exclusion sometimes of the church that's uh, looked at to be opposite, can we let that love come to us? And if you miss a day, skip it and move on. Uh, we were doing this uh, in, in our uh, staff, and I had given them uh, the opportunity to walk along with, and I didn't give them a whole lot of heads up, and maybe that's how you're, you're feeling today in this. I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to take this on, and I'm three or four days behind now, and now I've got five to catch up on if I'm going to do it tomorrow, and this just feels like so much, and I'm never going to get there, and I just want to give up. Skip them. Meet us where we're at, and, and let the momentum of us working together go through it. And if you really need to, tab the page, or fold down the pages that you didn't get a chance to do before, and come back another time. Give yourself some grace as well in the striving for the challenges. There's some things that are going to be in there that sound uh, pretty easy and doable in the 24-hour period you've got to try to accomplish them. Some of them, it might be, I need a plan, and I'm going to do this next week to accomplish it. Or this one, I'm, I have no idea how I'd ever be able to do that. I just can't. Be honest with yourself and with those that you're walking with, and God's going to do good things through all that, too. Give yourself grace. So lastly, I want to invite you to consider whether you are ready for that challenge. Along with your bulletin today, there was a card that was tucked in there. If you did not get one of these, um, actually, just raise your hand if you didn't get one of these, and I'll send the ushers down there. Um, on here is uh, an opportunity to say, these are the opportunities I'm ready to embrace in the Red Letter Challenge. And there's nothing fancy about this card, nothing amazing about this, but there is something awesome about putting your name on it and saying, I commit to read this, I commit to pray uh, in order that I can um, be a part of this. I commit to be a part of the weekly worship services or a life group or a faith at home. All right. And if you're somebody that puts your name on this and are willing to commit to this, I have some bracelets up here that if it's something that you'd be willing to wear and it would be a blessing to you over the course of the challenge to wear it, uh, please pick up one up here. I actually, we had an overwhelming response at the first service and we are definitely going to run out. I will order more and we'll try to get them here by next week. Uh, so um, if you're going to wear this and this would be an encouragement to you, uh, please grab one of those if you've uh, committed to something to be a part of the challenge. With that, uh, let me pray for us, and uh, we'll continue on with uh, hearing some more of the red letters that help transform us. Gracious God and Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us your word. Lord, help us to dream and dream big about how you might work in us and through us to grow as your disciples and to grow as those that would make disciples by people seeing in us you. Lord, we pray that that's, that's what happens in all of this. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen.